you said there a moment ago, I thought this was in, really fascinating, that um, you know, you, a big part of your education was on the variety circuit. Oh, yes. What has it taught you? Uh, well, it taught me that... Um, um, many lessons. Oh, <laughs> gosh, where do you start? Um, taught me discipline, self-discipline. Um, taught me how to hone, uh, hone a performance. Uh, um, taught me you always kept your belongings on you. Um, <laughs> and um, things like that, really, Fiona. When you talk about honing a performance, um, could you describe your particular way of honing a performance? I could, but <laughs> if I let you know that, everyone would be doing it. <laughs> So there are some things I keep to myself. There are a couple of things I've kept out of the book for that reason. Mm. So when you're performing and you're preparing to perform, Arthur, yeah. um, being the absolute perfectionist that I think you are... You think I am, that's right. Um, do you do anything particular before you go on stage in order to yeah. really come on with I do, know, I gusto? Do, I do um, warm-ups, of course, which are very important. You must always warm your body up before you go on. I ripple through the spine. Um, and um, I do um, exercises for the, for the mouth, uh, to the articulation, to bring the articulation to the fore, um, very much to the fore. Tongue twisters, like um, red leather, uh, uh, yellow leather. <laughs> I'm very good at these. You have to say them very fast, so that's the whole point of it. Um, red leather, yellow lorry. Uh, red leather, ruddy yolly. Red Ronnie, Larry, hello. <laughs> and um, what was the other one we used to do? Um, oh yeah, I I rattled my bottles in Rolex's yard. That's uh, very impressive. Yeah. Let's have a go at that one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'd better do that one actually. <laughs> There's kids in, isn't there? I've seen kids in. Yeah. That was, that was very, very impressive. Thank you. <laughs> and you've been keeping that, doing that, for, obviously, for, for years and years and years, oh, and that's yeah. why you speak so beautifully yeah. now. That's absolutely it. If I hadn't done that tonight in the dressing room, before I had a drink, before, um, <laughs> before I came on, I wouldn't have the articulation mm. I have when I was mm. Bring it all to the four, very, very much for the four. It's, it's, it's just wonderful, just sitting here listening to you just enunciate so beautifully. For Thorn Cool. Yeah, you're... <laughs> I think you should do Shakespeare. I think you should do The Bard. Oh, I don't know. I've done all that any time. Yeah, 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 yes. If music be the food of love, noble Titania, nymph in thy orisons, remember my dreams. Get thee to a nunnery, Ophelia. Go on, get thee. <laughs> Make a place look a mess. <laughs> Take that more misery guts with you as well. <laughs> that, all that. That's marvellous. You are, you are lost to the RSC. You should be on their stages. Yeah, well, we're in talks with them at the moment. Very good. Yeah. So, you, you were taken out of school, you were homeschooled, and you joined your parents' variety act. Was there a point that you thought, I've got to do this alone? Well, Go solo? If that's what it says in the book, yes. OK. <laughs> there was. But I think, I think you began to do that, but it was, it was interrupted because you had to go and do some national service. I did. Was like, that a bit like of a shock to the system? Every young man, uh, I, I, I did my duty, yep. Yes, I'll never forget when the national service papers plopped on the mat. <laughs> yep. Yep, Catholic, I was up, yep. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was there, I, uh, I had a meeting uh, with, a, with a few of the other lads that were there that uh, really, really, um, 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 you know, there's a word for it which escapes me, really defined me um, in the future. And that was, I, um, I met, um, uh, what's his face, um, Brian Connolly. Not the Brian Connolly, the comedian. Or the lead singer out of the pop group suite. This was another <laughs> blind cover, right. and um, we we uh, he could play the piano. So we got a little tea uh, dance together, and we were joined by Keith Moon, uh, not <laughs> Keith Moon from the. I've had this before. M Keith Moon from the pop group The Who. Another one, that um, and uh, Stuart Granger, not not. Not Stuart Granger, the film star with the grey temples, um, which he got the idea from me, incidentally. And he played um, the double bass. 
and we did uh, we played tea dances around the uh, around Catholic barracks and, and such like, uh, a bit like Spike Milligan did in his book, except we were better. <laughs> And then, of course, I, uh, I, I, I got um, a life-changing um, thing happened to me, and that was I got posted mm-hmm. to... An, uh, and uh, probably some of you are thinking, what does it mean he got posted? You can't post people. <laughs> and I thought that when they said I was being posted, but um, I, I explained to the sergeant major I was claustrophobic. <laughs> and um, he told me they, they didn't mean that. They meant something else in the army. Um, and it made me peel some potatoes. <laughs> They're always making you do things like that, peeling potatoes and painting coal white. I mean, if you're going to paint coal, you should paint it in nice colours, not white, like a like an azure blue or something from that side of the colour wheel. So I think I suggested that to him as well. You know, he's got more potatoes to peel. <laughs> in fact, um, because of that, I, I, after I was discharged, I went to the doctors, and he told me what I'd got because of the potato peeling was a form of shell shock. Except with a, a potato. <laughs> a, a potato shock. <laughs> and I still have repetitive arm syndrome now. For that. But you said there, and you, you um, digressed, you said that, that you were, were, were posted. <laughs> Where were you posted to? Uh, I was posted to... Um, and how did you find out? Uh, on the notice board. Oh. It's in the book. Sorry, I... I, I yes, you did tell me. <laughs> Research. Um, I was posted to um, Alexandria, which I thought was in Scotland, but um, I found out it was in Egypt. And um, so I, I, I went across to Egypt. Oh, and do you know I had the most wonderful time in Egypt? You know, I, I was very lucky when I got there because the, um, the captain um, recognised me from uh, the um, variety shows because I, I had started and we skipped over this uh, naughty you naughty you um, um, my memory man act which I was building up quite a reputation on the circuit with my memory man act and he rem- remembered me from that from uh, the Watford Palace I think it was um, and um, he, he put me in charge of the shows they did over there so all my time was spent auditioning people and, and directing writing shows and playing all the lead roles because everyone wanted me to um, <laughs> Yeah, and we did some lovely plays. We did a wonderful production of Fiddler on the Roof, and the Egyptians loved it. They couldn't get enough of it. Um, <laughs> I tell you what, you can say what you like about the Egyptians, but the hospitality they afforded me went before them. It really did. <laughs> and, uh, of course, that's where my love for all things Egypt came from, from Egyptian alcoholology. After, um, not alcoholology, Egyptian alcoholic. Or, <laughs> Um, 